Hello and welcome to Off the Press this morning. Again, we shall be looking at the national dailies and try to understand, make a sense of the headlines. And with me to do so this morning is Dr. Idowu again, at Degoke, Public Affairs Analyst. Thank you. You were here with me in the news, so it's good yeah. to have you again. Thank you. And then, uh, Ifi Oji, Legal Practitioner and Public Affairs uh, Analyst, welcome back. Thank you very much. Welcome. It's good to see you. Uh, okay. So, we will hit the ground running this morning in the interest of time, and we shall begin with the Punch newspaper. It will be displayed very quickly. Uh, so, the Punch has banks contract, uh, banks contract workers uh, rise to 46,235. That's on page page 31. Okay, I get it now. Banks contract workers rise to 46,235. Please find our story on page 31 of the Punch newspaper already displayed. And then new minimum wage uh, payment begins before December 21st. That's according to the Federal Executive Council after their meeting yesterday. That story is on page 11. And then we are owing 150 billion Naira judgment debt, says Malami. That's on page 13. And prediction on Nigeria's breakup may be fulfilled, according to Jega. And that story is on page 8. Now, Nigeria loses 5 trillion naira annually to tax evasion, according to Fowler. That story, again, is on page 31. Sex for Mark uh, lecturers will face maximum penalties, according to President Buhari. That story is on page 10. The big story on the punch, as you can see, MDA's uh, payroll system. Federal government and ASU set for showdown over deadline. That story is on page two. IPPIS is an illegality, according to lecturers. Civil servants rush to meet the deadline. Now we have a story, picture story there uh, from the multiple uh, accidents yesterday. One dies, many injured in the, uh, Lagos multiple crashes. The story is on page 10 of the Punch newspaper. Now, court halts police recruitment over IG and the P, uh, public Police Service Commission face-off on page 13. And then ICPC arrests 26 Federal Road Safety Corps officials for alleged extortion. That's on page 11. And then gunmen kidnap Undo judge in Edo, demand 50 million naira ransom on page 10. And down paths, headsmen consider legal option against Oyo grazing law. You can see that story on page 8 of the Punch newspaper. And something on fraud, EFCC tenders Naira Mali's laptop in court on page 45 of the Punch newspaper. And very lastly, 30, 33 states can't survive without federal allocation, according to reports on page 31. Where do we begin this morning? Good morning. Let me start from you, right yeah. there. Okay, good morning. Good morning again. Yeah, but I hope one day we'll be able to just look at the news. And, and it will all be good, good news. news yeah. But you know, good news is... Uh, yeah, but we need, not... to, we need to hope that one day we will see And we share good news. We'll just yeah, come I'm saying say, that oh. because of the crash again. <laughs> yeah. But I'll start from the Jegas prediction. Okay. Um, I saw a bit of that and I read it and I understood what the professor was saying mm -hmm. uh, because we have lost, people, Nigerians are beginning to lose confidence in our electoral system. system and he actually analyzed it from 20 years ago, from 1999, how the decline in voters' participation up until date. And going to the, I think about two governorship elections coming next month. Mm -hmm. And it, also. Yeah, and the reactions, the news making the rounds is people are not interested. And he related that to the CIA sometimes predicted that Nigeria would disintegrate mm. uh, after 2015 or something like that. Well, we're in 2020. Yeah, but it's 2019, not going away. I'm yeah. almost ahead. <laughs> it's we want not going the future to come so quickly. Mm. But it's not going away. And my take is we cannot be irresponsible. We cannot be practicing what we're practicing. We cannot be doing things in a way that has no direction, no process. Where we saw what is happening in Kogi State, hmm. we are seeing what is happening in Bayelsa State. At least for now, those two states are on the camera. We're focusing on them. We saw a few weeks to the next election, the governor impeaching his deputy, his deputy against the recommendation of the committee. So. What's all going these, on? yes, all these showmanship, Robin Hood leadership that we have is what is forming that opinion 
that that prediction might come to pass. If, if I could just quickly just add to what he's saying, just mm -hmm. to give him a little bit of a legal background, a legal perspective. Uh, the Electoral Act is one of uh, the biggest uh, acts and bastions of laws in Nigeria in terms of coded law and codified laws. Mm -hmm. And for one of the main provisions that I think a lot of people have problems with, and, and is a general consensus, is that um, one of the provisions that, that deals with uh, automation and digitization in terms of the electoral process and counting votes mm. is actually illegal through them, and, and that is made possible by the uh, Electoral Act. So it, beg, you know, you, it makes you wonder if, uh, if, mm. if our laws are in such a way that they can actually codify and um, did, um, illegality of uh, the digital automation process, mm -hmm. where are we going? The future is digital. That's the correct. future is technical. So much, other people may argue that, oh, okay, America has the same uh, law as well. But we all know what happened during uh, the elections that brought um, the, with Bush and Al Gore. Uh -huh. Yeah. So where uh, where Bush came back into power. So we know that this this system is is intrinsically flawed. Another thing that people also wonder about, another point that a lot of um, uh, people wonder about, the general consensus is that if you have a, a ballot and you have an actual like ticket for voting, and all you're able to see are the political party, and it's centered around the political party, not the individual candidate, mm -hmm. not, the, you know, not their mandate, not what they have promised you individually within the different communities, and it's so centered around the federal and federalism, at what point are we going to actually look around and be confident in what is put before us? Mm -hmm. Because we know that, it, that those policies and those promises, if they're not central and the, to what they're promising you, and it's all about the party, it's party-centric, then we know that it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's selfish. Yeah. It's a selfish, selfish position yeah. to take. And they, they, obviously there's no, um, there's no integrity in terms of them putting forward what they have promised to do if, that is not, if they don't have any kind of mandates to do so mm. or any kind of um, checks and balances to do so. So I understand what Jega is saying. And he, to, be, to be honest, it starts from him. <laughs> Yeah, Let's be I mean, honest. He's got experience. He's also got experience there. in that. So he, he may be warning it, but he has, he's in a position to do something about it. You know. So let let's start from inside. Let's work our way out, and let's try and fix the problem internally. Hmm. Fix the problem internally. Okay. So there's a showdown. They said there's going to be a showdown today. We talked about this. Uh, the ASU federal know. government and the. You are happy with the IPS? Yeah, I am happy with mm -hmm. the IPS because, uh, like I said before, we have so much uh, ghost workers. In the system, mm. this Let's clean up the system. Yes. Yes. We need to clean up the system. In as much as say we need to clean up ourselves, our mindset, our attitude, our values, but the system that we support, whatever. Because, because the people make up the system, yes. isn't it? Yeah, but you I need agree. to you need to chart a way for the people mm -hmm. to fall in line. But now I don't understand what as we say. They won't be out of the system and then continue with all sorts of They that we argue get. that it's exploitative. That's their argument, anyways, and well, they, they have given the federal government a template which the federal government has declined. No, you, so we'll you, you cannot be a judge mm -hmm. in your own case. So ASU cannot tell federal government, this is how I want, because they, there is perceived corruption even in the university system. Mm -hmm. So there's a way, we have to look for a way to fish it out, and that's what the government is doing. Mm. So we say we well, this list. Okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry, just to quickly add to, mm -hmm. to what he said. I, I also agree with what he's saying. I feel that. Although I don't, I don't necessarily agree with the fact that uh, ASU shouldn't have a voice in terms of mm. how the, the direction of the uh, integrated system. I mean, they are part of the system. They've been in, in for it. And, and, and whether we like to admit it or not, they are probably the smartest 5% uh, of the country mm. in terms of being, having professors and academia. Yeah. Yeah. So they typically would have, a, if they wanted to have something work, they, I'm sure they have a lot of arguments around it. So what, what we're trying to actually look at is a general theme of the direction of Nigeria going 2020. We need transparency. We need transparency, even from right from the federal level to all the way down to uh, the uh, MDAs, all the way down to even the employ em employees and everybody it else. It should trickle down. It should trickle down a funnel effect, as they say in, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, parlance. But the, I guess for what I'm saying, I, I want to look at it. I, you know, I always like looking at it from a big picture uh, um, perspective. And I know for a fact that these are general themes that are running, running through Nigeria in terms mm -hmm. of our development, transparency. 
there is, there is a there is a there is a lack of uh, willingness to want to digitize our processes because we know that with digitization comes transparency yeah. Yeah. and everybody wants to obfuscate issues. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, in terms of I, I mean I read the read the article. I think each each um, each side of the um, coin has a point, mm. but ultimately we just need to make sure that everything is transparent, even from the federal all the way down to even ASU and other MDAs. Mm. Uh, just add one. Mm. Before it was decided. I think federal government met with everybody, yes. all the MDAs, and they agreed. The turn, the U-turn by ASU is the question. Oh. Right. Why the sudden U-turn? They already agreed before. Yeah. They oh, were up for it. They just made a U-turn, I think, last week or some oh. times ago. So oh. that's the question. That Why are you saying no now mm. after agreeing to go I ahead? Mean, even from a woman's perspective, everybody's allowed to change their mind. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's a woman's privilege to change her, her mind. It's her prerogative to change her mind, you know? So let's think of us as the ultimate lady well, let's in see Nigeria, how, and let's yeah. see how it pans out. Well, let's see how they can find their mm. way. That's okay. all I know. All mm. right, so, so there's something on the road again, the state of the roads. This yeah, is usually the result yeah. when... I mean, this morning we had on the news, the, I don't know if you saw the news, yeah. the road in Edo State, it um, is pathetic. Okele Road, going to Abuja from Okpila. Ekpuma. And Okila, yeah. it is pathetic. And this will be the result of it, you know, when we don't have a good roads or things like that. We hope that uh, something is done. Okay, and oh yeah, so that's the video. We can actually quickly take a look at that and you hmm. see how terrible our roads yeah, are. I mean, how, how do... There's a road connecting you know, two states. How do we get to that point, this point where, and we have leaders in this head state and this is the situation of the road and it cuts across. I mean, I was talking, you know, I talked about it last week when we, when we, when we had the meeting with um, um, His Excellency, mm. the, the Governor of Lagos State, the Governor of Lagos State, and he made, you know, he made the, I wouldn't call it an excuse, but he made the... Uh, they gave a reason mm. why the roads, particularly in uh, Lagos State, have not been addressed uh, comprehensively. And he, talk, he, you know, he mentioned the flooding and the rains. Mm -hmm. We want to give them the benefit of the doubt. But I have to also look at other roads that have actually been built during the rainy season. We have that long stretch of the road in Ikui. I think it was built by Jen Julius Berger. Mm. And come rain or shine, that road still remains the same. So, I mean... God bless you. Yeah, so, so we have to basically... Us. Who are we giving these contracts to? Well, yes. God bless you. Let me just have to that. Amen. <laughs> I'm bringing church in the yes, matter. Yes, it suddenly becomes a pastor. No, yes. No, because of what she said. Let okay. the choir because speak. It, it just shows some of these roads that are uh, very destroyed or dilapidated mm. now in Lagos were constructed less than five years, six That's years ago, eight yes. years ago. Yes. And now we're mm. having problems. Yes. There are roads that have been constructed 20 years ago, yeah. properly done, and they're still functioning. Yes, that's, that's stretching oh, Ikoi. I think, I'm sure we all know the stretching Ikoi that leads straight right through Bodilon, through Gerard. Yes. That road was built during the rainy seasons, I, I, I found out. Mm. And it's so funny that that road is still holding up till, holding now. Up till now. So, we, we, it, so I mean, we, we don't like to give so it to Joe as better. No excuse of flooding in that area. No. Yes. It's, I it's agree. not raining so, in that particular exactly. Exactly. <laughs> to the second paper now and uh, this day is up for uh, review as, as we see the story there. CBN crude oil production rose to 1.93 million uh, barrels per day in August. Corporate bodies fueling corruption in host countries says Malabu oil deal prosecutor. That story is on the front page. It would be displayed uh, but it's continued on page six. Now concerns mount over state's fiscal sustainability and that's on page six. Uh, Buhari Putin signed pact on military cooperation. I know that um, if you would like to talk about the Sochi meeting. And then Nigerians losing confidence in the electoral system, Jega wants, says declining uh, voter turn and ev turnout evidence of distrust. Uh, distrust rather. Now, court orders uh, the Police Service Commission and police to suspend recruitment exercise. They've been on that argument back and forth. That story is on page five. Thank you. Already displayed there, as you can see. Uh, so, Gentlemen and gent gentleman and gentlewoman. So where do we begin this morning? Uh, if you wanted to say something about the uh, yeah the uh, Africa Russia yeah, summit. Yeah, there. that was actually. Uh, all, I mean, we all know that all roads led to uh, Sochi mm -hmm. uh, last Sochi. week. Yes, and all. I think I don't know how many of the different countries in Africa were represented. About thirty-five. There were. Uh, that is more or less more than two thirds of what we have in mm -hmm. Africa right now. So literally, Africa's uh, leaders were well represented uh, in Russia. Mm -hmm. um, two things, we have to also ask ourselves what the agenda is, why? Mm -hmm. Russia in the 90s had such a huge, especially as the USSR, mm -hmm. had such yeah, a huge Soviet impact Union, yeah. in terms of um, Africa's, uh, I guess, industrial in development and involvement. I mean, we only have to look at the Angolan flag, which mm -hmm. has the ham and the sickle. 
That is a, the typical Russian communist uh, symbol. Symbol. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also look at, uh, I think another, another one has a Kalashnikov mm -hmm. in, in, their, in their flag. That is, that is basically just the impact that Russia had in the, from the 70s to all, up, all the way up to the 90s. Mm -hmm. So once the, um, the, um, uh, the Cold War ended and, and, and the, the countries were broken up, and Russia broke up into diff in different countries, oh, sorry, USSR broke up into different countries, and we had Russia as the main mm -hmm. country, they began to realize that they had lost their foothold in Africa. Mm -hmm. And I know right now as we speak, Russia and China are in bed together, mm -hmm. trying, to, trying to, I guess, to combat the big bad uh, uh, Western brother, which is the United States. Yes. So through, it, 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 no, it, I, it's only a natural um, uh, in, understanding that because of that, um, because of that relationship that has been fostered between US and, um, Russia and China, mm -hmm. I'm sure that all the ideas and thoughts that Russia have implemented in Africa has rubbed off on Russia, mm -hmm. and they begin to realize the virtue or the, the the main advantages of having some kind of foothold in Africa, which is quite sad because we all know that ultimately that is new that's new um, new colonization, yeah, in, in full effect. But what can we do? They have the money. We are looking for the money. And with all FDIs down at the moment, we don't we have to play ball. Mm -hmm. So we find ourselves in Russia. And um, it's quite sad that that's what it's come down to. But ultimately, if we're able to reduce our debt profile, and we're able to get more uh, um, right. moribund yeah. projects yeah. down, in, moribund projects activated in Nigeria, I'm all for it. Mm. So that's, there's a good side to it. Yes, there's, 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 a good, there's two good sides to the story. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Okay. So that's that. And then again, they have the same story which was talked about Nigerians losing their yeah. confidence in the electoral system, and that's been explained also. I think we'll move on to the next paper. But before we do that, on the back page, please, of a, a this day newspaper is, is a column there by Olusegun Adeni bidding uh, my brother good night. Uh, mm -hmm. Please grab a copy of this and find out. It's already displayed. Thank you very much, guys. It's already displayed there, but please do grab a copy of that and find out what it is about. We have left uh, the nation and the vanguard, but we will begin with vanguard. We will continue, rather, with vanguard. It would be displayed also. And it says, Nigeria loses uh, 15 billion uh, dollars to tax evasion annually, according to Fowler. On page 8, Fulani headsmen kick against anti-open grazing bill in Oyo. That story is on page 40. And CIA's doomsday prediction on Nigeria may come to pass. Again, Jega saying there on page 9, a government always makes over estimated projections of revenue intakes. The result is a perennial failure to meet those targets. Olu Fasson, they're saying on page 31, Nigeria's domestic debt hit 17.4 trillion naira in the second quarter of 2019. That's from MBS. That uh, stats and data is from MBS. But you find the full story on page 19 of the Vanguard newspaper. The big story is minimum wage. Federal government directs payment by December 31st. It is on page five. It takes effect from April 18, 2019, when minimum wage law was signed. Uh, wages Commission in Gigi to send consequential adjustments to state NYC members to enjoy new, mini new, minimum, new minimum wage also, according to minister. And they okay 1.7 billion naira for airports, communication equipment. 10 states owing workers areas of salaries and others will benefit. That's on page 22. And then, of course, we have the picture story of the accident, the unfortunate uh, accident from yesterday that we had this morning. That's one person died as a result and scores injured, unfortunately. Now, gunmen, on in matters of insecurity, gunmen uh, kidnap federal high court judge and they demand 50 Ooh. million naira. Yeah. And that's on page 41. We talked about it in the yeah. news. Mm. State of insecurity again, I guess. Wow. And it's quite unfortunate that this is all. Um, it's almost becoming a business. You know, there's something you said in the news that uh, I, I wanted to talk about it, but f f because we didn't have time. When you say people kidnap themselves, you know, abduct yeah. themselves, yeah, so it know. means that this is almost becoming a business. Apart from the fact that it's a crime in itself, people yeah. are looking at it, yeah. you know, in, in a way, and it, it shows us where we are as a society. country and as a society, mm -hmm. as a people, and as a nation. Anyways, any thoughts on any of the matters? Well, uh, on the minimum wage, I hope Finally. this I hope this minimum wage or this wage increase will be able to take people home. Hmm. Because now it's been on yeah, for months and months and months, hmm. and then you find out that you get the increase by December. Now they've been ordered to pay the areas. And the price of commodities goes up. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it's, he's right. It's not adjusted according to inflation. There's mm. no inflationary adjustment. So, so, you know, what would have cost is them? Is there any difference, really? 
Yeah, that's, it, it's actually really what we need to be looking at. It's not Sorry, actually. Ify, not cutting Sorry, Ife, not short. He's not just increasing the minimum wage. But what can, what is the purchasing power mm. of that wage? Which is the problem for me. You can get all the big monies in this world, but what can you buy with it? That's what I was saying. By yeah. that's exactly what I was trying to yeah. say before mm. I was, you know. So, so what would have cost you maybe like two, you know, three naira now? Mm. But even if it's paid in arrears, you've lost about, and it, and it cost five naira now. Yes. You've already lost two two naira out mm. of the deal. So. At that point, you're wondering, even if I'm paid in arrears, there's obviously a loss that, um, at, the back, at the back end of that yeah. that is not being accounted for. True. So, so they, they get that, the, the arrears, but again, it goes, it, it's like it comes in and it's going out almost exactly. immediately. Yeah, exactly. But anyways, they, they've come to a middle ground, so mm. we can move forward from this uh, story and we hope that mm. uh, we have better conversation is around in the minimum wage also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, so we'll just quickly uh, take The Nation, which is our final paper for today. Mm -hmm. And it's a court halts police recruitment on page 40. IGPC, uh, Pub Police Service Commission battle, uh, battle rages on. We know that story has been going on. It's on page 40. Air is to acquire 10 more planes and air airline turns five. Oh, they're only five years. Wow, okay, that's on page 40. Stolen credit card info on Naramali's laptop. That's on page four. He can locate bank servers. Uh, please find out what that's about. And then on the Biosa and Kogi uh, elections, APC planning to rig, unleash violence, and uh, Diri, according to Diri, he alleges that. And DS says to politicians, we are watching you very closely. And then PDP not ready for elections. This story and more is on page 45 of the Nation newspaper. Now, Russia to complete Ajao Kuta steel, among others, power plant, real projects coming. It's on the front page, already displayed there, but it's continued on page seven. Now, the federal government sets a December deadline to pay minimum wage areas. We've already talked about that. In Gige, state's private sector must obey law. NYC members to benefit also, according to Ngege there. I think the only two uh, stories that I knew is the thoughts on the police. That's battle between the police uh, and the IG has been on, so we can see that there is there seem to be a movement. There's a shift now from where they are. And um, any thoughts on that? No. Well, let's watch and see what happens. Oh, yeah. We've seen the battle uh, between them. We'll see what happens. And then, okay, there's something on Epp is uh, there. Uh, to acquire more planes, and then Naira Mali's uh, story. Ekiti Court nullifies Supreme Court's verdict, and uh, why Oyo scrapped Levy? Please grab a copy of the Nation newspaper. We already talked about Russia. Uh, we did, but I just wanted to just mention okay. one thing about Russia as well. Okay. I know that in uh, 2016, yes. Nigeria and Russia signed a protocol, and one of the main principles of the protocol was to basically foster economic growth in Africa, especially in Nigeria, since that, since, since that protocol pertained to Nigeria. Mm. So I would say that the com sure, completion of Ajakota and other and the gas power projects, we all know that um, through the oligarchs that Russia is one of the biggest power players at the yeah, moment. With, I think it's Luke Oil and yeah, Gazprom. So, so with both of them, right, we want to basically want to find some kind of way of fostering that economic growth between both parties. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so very much. Thank it you. is actually where we'll call it a wrap. Thank you, <laughs> Thank <laughs> Dr. Femi. Thank you, Ifi, and Thank welcome back. Thanks, Thanks for your contribution. And that will be it for Off the Press uh, for today. We will continue this as always here on Plus TV Africa. The time is 8.30 and I am Amaka Okui.